Okay, well, we've got another um, another slide presentation here, a uh, short lecture. And what I'm doing here is reviewing uh, what I talked about um, last Thursday about uh, screening curves and load duration curves. And as you can see, um, I've got a new uh, style of video here that I'm trying out. Uh, I've got my webcam set up. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do a lot visually here, but somehow it, I think it makes it easier for me to at least uh, uh, talk because in the last slideshow, when all you saw were the slides, um, I was gesturing a lot to no one in particular, and um, this just makes it sound like I'm not not wasting my time. So um, if I'm looking at this right, if I understand this right, up there are the slides, and, uh, and we'll just get started here. So in Chapter 3, we talked about um, that there's different kinds of electric generating plants, which we knew. Uh, but we talked about the, the need for that and the fact that the load varies hour by hour, day by day. There's seasonal cycles, there's daily cycles. And, um, and different plants, different kinds of technology, uh, have different pluses and minuses, meaning different kinds of loads. Some are more expensive to build up front, but cheaper to operate. Some are cheaper to build up front, but more expensive to operate. And so uh, we want to look at tools that will help us explore these trade-offs. So in, in, in uh, looking at these, these facilities that generate electricity, we look at the cost, and we separate it into two categories. The fixed cost, also called, often called the capital cost. These are the upfront costs, planning, uh, designing, constructing, large sums of money um, that, that are required. And then the variable costs, mostly fuel, but other things that are set up on a per kilowatt hour basis. Um, and then we also introduce this concept called a capacity factor for a facility. And a capacity factor is a number between 0 and 1, or a percentage, and it talks about how much energy a facility makes in a year relative to its capacity. So, for, for example, if it was a 1,000 kilowatt plant and it ran all year long at 1,000 kilowatts, we would say its capacity factor was 1. And that's rare. If, if at all possible, because uh, plants need some downtime, they need some maintenance. Uh, but, but that's the idea. So here's an equation here that says, looks at the total number of kilowatt hours produced in a year, uh, divide by the nameplate, that's the rating of the plant, times the number of hours in a year. And you get, um, you get the capacity factor. Typical capacity factors for a real expensive coal or nuclear plant are on the order of 0 0.9, about 90%. Uh, for natural gas plants, they tend to be a little more expensive to run. They don't run as often, so this would be like around 50%. Capacity factor for a hydro dam is about 50 to 60% because the water flow is so variable over the course of the year. Uh, so well, that's going to be an important factor as we move forward. So, uh, so what are screening curves? Well, they allow utilities to compare these different technologies and look for the best combination of them. Um, they're written and drawn and computed on a per kilowatt of capacity basis. In other words, we don't know when we start out how big a plant we're talking about. But there's pretty good numbers. We have a pretty good idea when we're um, looking at the different technologies about how much they cost on a per kilowatt basis. So if you have a thousand megawatt plant, well, that's a, you know, that's a, um, a million kilowatts. So you take the number, multiply times a million, and you go forward. Um, so, uh, and, and so, and we also then split it up on an annual basis per annum or per year. So here's the example in, in three, in example 3.3 in the text. It takes data from table 3.3, and I just made a note here that um, I assume the author, when he, when he wrote this book, you know, was talking to a lot of utility executives, and those numbers were pretty good for the time, but the book is... Well, it's pushing 10 years old, so um, I think, I just put a note in there to say I'm not sure those numbers are still good. These are these are numbers that move around quite a bit. So for the coal plant, he said capital costs were about $1,400 per kilowatt of capacity. The heat rate, uh, that's going to go into the variable cost, 9,700 BTUs per kilowatt hours. And we talked about that in the last lecture. That's really also a measure of the thermal efficiency of the plant. It just has funny units. Um, the fuel cost, um, point out, if you look at the table in the book, it says the fuel cost for coal were $1.50 per mm BTU. And that's a, a very typical abbreviation in the industry. mm stands for a million, 10 to the sixth. I don't really know the origins of that, but that's what it means. Um, and the variable operations and maintenance, 1M, is 
0.43 cents per kilowatt hour. Don't read that as 43 cents. It's a, it's a little less than half of a cent, so it's 0.0043 dollars. Okay, so a little engineering economics you probably remember from class. Uh, when, when you took this, uh, that capital costs, these one-time costs are really large sums, and utilities can't recoup that all at once. They want to spread that out over the life of the plant, uh, prorated as it were. They also use the term amortize. So the accountants and the utilities crunch the numbers, look at how much it costs for them to borrow the money. They usually sell bonds or something like that. And they come up with a fixed charge rate, which is a percentage that you multiply times the capital cost. And that's how much you plan to recover every year. Or another way to look at that, it's how much uh, you can say the facility costs. It's that year's share of the capital cost as it spreads out. So the example used the fixed charge rate of about 16%, 0.16. So compute the fixed cost is very simple. It's the, it's the capital cost, $1,400 per kilowatt, times the fixed charge rate, 0.16 per year, and you come up with this number of $224 per kilowatt per year. So that means it's, we could expect for a coal plant to pay uh, $224 per kilowatt of capacity per year spread out in the life of the plant. Variable costs have two components, the fuel cost and the o &M costs, and the fuel costs themselves have two components. The heat rate, we talked about that, BTU per kilowatt hour, and the fuel cost, dollars per BTU. Uh, but if you, if you start moving this forward, you see the units still aren't quite right. So let's just multiply that out. So here's your variable cost. There's your heat rate. Here's your fuel cost rate. So you multiply those together. Add then the O&M rate. See, I've divided by 100 to get rid of the cents. And I get this number, one 0.88 cents per kilowatt hour, 0 0.0188 um, dollars per kilowatt hour. Remember, we're looking at a, at a, the screening curves I said, and, and the number we had before is, is dollar per kilowatt per year. Well, this isn't even close, um, but this ends up being the slope of the slanted line on our screening curve. Uh, the actual variable cost will resolve to the right units if you multiply it times the number of hours per year you plan to run or it's likely to run. So for example, in the, in the, in the book, we said, well, that coal plant scheduled to run 8,000 hours a year, nearly the entire year. So you take that 1.88 cents, multiply it times 8,000, the hours here cancel, and here you get $150.80 per kilowatt per year, the right units. And so here's the screening curve. I've recreated it here. Um, you can't quite see that vertical line, but here's the vertical line at zero dollar. Here's that 244 or 224 uh, fixed cost per kilowatt per year. And here's the sloping line that at $800 is 250, 240 plus 150, showing up right here at about 325. So pretty much what we'd expect to see. The slope of this line is 1.88 cents per kilowatt hour. And this tells us a lot about what we would need to charge for the electricity to get the cost back. This is how much it costs the utilities to do it. By looking at this, and let's look at the next slide here. You, t you, you take any point along here, which is the number of hours you expect it to run, and draw a line from the origin to that. And the slope of that line now becomes the per kilowatt hour cost that we need to recover. So for example, if it runs 8,000 hours, we'd look at it's right around four and a half cents per kilowatt hour to recover the cost. But if it's only 4,000 hours, it's quite a bit more. It's seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and keep in mind, this is just one part of the rate structure, okay? And utilities also have to run their offices and pay their executives and all these other things. So there's more that goes into this, but this is, this is just recovering the cost for the plant that generates the electricity. Keeping along with what was in the book, um, they, he went through this example. We looked at three different technologies. There's the coal that we just went through, a combined cycle gas turbine, and a simple combustion gas turbine. And you see these three lines. So here's the blue line, still the coal. Um, the orange line is the combined cycle, and the green line is the simple cycle, the combustion turbine. You see each one has different capital costs, the simple cycle being the cheapest, coal being most expensive. The slope is the variable cost. See, coal has relatively low 
variable costs, whereas the simple cycle has the highest variable costs. And if you go through the numbers, what you see is that it's because it's the least efficient. The fuel cost for the combined cycle here in orange and the single cycle are the same. Simple cycle are the same. Fuel costs are both natural gas, but the heat rates are different. The heat rates for the simple cycle are much higher because it's not as efficient of a plant. The intersection points are what's interesting on this graph. They tell us where the, they, they divide the year, or the number of hours in the year, into regions telling us when, which plants most efficient for different durations. For example, here, if you look at this, this blue line on the end, it tells us for any, for, for 60, no, it's about 6,500 hours or more per year, the coal is your best bet. For about 1,800 hours or less per year, the simple cycle is your best bet. And here is the combined cycle in between. Keep in mind, this is just kind of all the hours per year thrown in there. It's not meant to be chronology. In other words, this is in January and this is in December. It's just telling you out of the 8,700 hours in a year, if you're going to run something for more than 6,500 hours, make it a coal plant. So the bottom line here is the optimum is the lowest line through here. These intersection lines tell us when that lowest line changes. Okay, one more piece to add this and we'll bring it all together, and that's load duration curves. Um, so imagine looking at a plot of the hour-by-hour -hour variation of the load, and we talked about this in class, that we'd see um, peaks and valleys pretty much on a daily basis, a peak around 6, somewhere between 4 and 6 in the afternoon, the valley around 3 in the morning, and it repeats on a daily basis, and depending on the weather or the other activities or the season, it that, that level rises and falls, but it never goes to zero. There's always quite a bit of activity on the grid at any, any given time. So imagine you have all those numbers now. Put it in a spreadsheet, and you just sort the load. So you know, you know so many kilowatts in this hour, so many kilowatts in the second hour, and just sort it. Don't worry about the chronology of it. Let's now look at the highest one to the lowest, and plot that sorted uh, list of loads against hours 1 to 8,760 and you get, uh, you'll get a load duration curve. And that's an example of a load duration curve right there. Actually, right there. Um, you'll see that it peaks out here at about 13,000. In this case, I use kilowatts. Imagine a very small grid. Usually these are in megawatts, thousands of megawatts, but we'll use kilowatts. for 13,000 kilowatts. In other words, it never gets higher than that. There's never any period. That's the peak load, and that's what the utilities still the plan for. And out in the other end, at 8,760, it's around 5,000, probably a little south of that. And never gets lower than that. That's an interesting point, because that, what that means is the load never gets below 5,000 kilowatts. So if you had a 5,000 kilowatt generator on that thing, you would never have to turn it off. It would be on all the time. And you can look at any point in between. You can see here, I don't know, right around 2,800 hours, the load is between 10,000 and 12 and 13,000 kilowatts, and so on. So you can start playing this. The book, again, does a pretty good job of walking you through this. Gives you more ways to describe it. But what really gets interesting when you bring those two curves together, bring the screening curve together, load duration curve together, they both are on 0 to 8,760. They're both both on a per hour basis, and, uh, and, and draw those vertical lines that go through these intersections we had before, draw them down into the low duration curve, and we find that we can now start interpreting the low duration curve to tell us about how big the plants need to be. So the next step is to draw these vertical lines here, they go, you know, so we have these intersection lines, where these intersection lines hit the low duration curve, draw them over here, same thing here. So where does this come in? Well, the uh, PowerPoint would let me delight a line exactly where I want it, but let's call that 7,500 watts. This line here looks like it's about 10,500 watts. Okay, so what that tells me is that um, if I build, a, say, a coal plant at 7,500 kilowatts of capacity, um, that's going to be my best bet for my base load, my always on. In other words, yeah, it can't be on here unless I sell the power somewhere else. 
you can modulate it a little bit. So this tells me that for the, the coal part of it, that's the size it should be. In between here, where we know the combustion gas turbine is the best, it's got to be just make up the difference here. So between 10,500 and 7,500. And then on the lower end here, where the peaker is the best, it just needs to hit, we just need this much capacity from 13,000 to 10,500. And sure enough, that's what we get. So the optimal bit, and the, and, and the book points out, this is very rough, but it, it, it really gives us a lot of understanding. A coal plant somewhere in the capacity of 7,500 kilowatts, it would run most of the time, probably run all the time, but just never, not always at full capacity, but much of it. Next on the stack is a combined cycle turbine with about 3,000 kilowatts of capacity, and then finally a peaker with a similar amount, about 2,500 worth of capacity. They may not all be the same plant. It be several plants. Peakers tend to be kind of small, hundreds of kilowatts. But, uh, but that's the general idea. And this is my last slide, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. So, so going back to the load. So this is the, the same the data I built the load duration curve from. And it's showing one, two, three, about four and a half days worth of operation of the load. And you see here it's peaking around 12,000 and coming down around 5,500. And I drew these lines at the capacities of the plants. In other words, here's my coal plant, 7,500. Yeah, roughly under the line, a little high. Uh, kilowatts of capacity. And you see it's on nearly all the time. And in fact, it only has to be throttled back a little bit. See, that scale isn't zero. So it only, it's only these little valleys. And, ch and chances are uh, the utility would probably, uh, if it didn't want to throttle back the coal plant at night, it would find a market to sell that power to somewhere else and move it across the grid. The, com the combined cycle plant would start every morning, run for a while, or run the rest of the day and shut off at night, run for a while, shut off at night, run for a while, shut off at night. And, and then these peakers would only have to run on those periods of time between roughly 4 to 6 or 4 to 8 p.m., depending on the season and the use. And they're very good at these very fast variations, so, so they're very well suited for that. So, um, you know, I know we covered that in class Thursday. I, I think it's worth spending a little extra time on because it helps you understand how the grid operates and how the utilities have to look at the grid. And that's important because the renewables are going to have to operate in that same environment. So uh, that's it, and uh, I hope this worked out well for you.